Double the topics, double the fun. I'm Sarah. I'm Charity. I'm Alan. And I'm Dan. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of hesitancy there. Like, I don't bit. I don't know who I am. Just trying to figure That's out who I was he trying is. To think, I was trying to think of my personality. <laughs> ah. I wanted to come across. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Uh, as as, as uh, Dan said, uh, he was very hinting with that, subtly hinting. Uh, we're going to talk about personalities. I guess just one topic today, not double the topics. But There's a lot uh, of information in this one there, topic. It's a lot to cover. I know we, we've known each other for a long time, but I don't know if we've actually ever analyzed who we are. I Every guess what? single moment I've, is under <laughs> analysis. We're, we're always <laughs> judging each other. That's right. Well, I, I will say, and I'm trying, we used to, I used to do this a lot in college. When you initially meet someone that later on you become friends with, like, like when I first met you, you were like this. I couldn't stand you. And now we're the best of buddies. I tend to have, mm-hmm. there were some people like that in college. I couldn't stand them at first. Mm-hmm. And then when I started getting to know, I'm like, oh, we're actually pretty cool. And I, I had go some back, people I hated all four years. <laughs> <laughs> I still hate their guts. So, but I was, before we start really fully analyzing, I want to double check. Um, when we first initially met each other way mm-hmm. all those years ago, because I think when I first met you, Alan, you were very ambitious. I think you still are, but you were just like, <laughs> you, you were really excited that you were, I don't know, I guess. I needed back a job. In, you needed a job. <laughs> so, so maybe that was why, because you, were, you yeah. were, you were very like ambitious you were excited yeah. which is cool but you know i and i have been here for a while so i was and now like, you're just a lazy bum doesn't care about life <laughs> oh <laughs> you, 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 wow. went, you went to the other extreme <laughs> well that's what you're building up to no no but it's just the fact that i guess because i've been here a bit not 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 that stuff has lessened but it was just like well once you start getting into the 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 swing of things then you'll start to understand mm-hmm. and that was kind of my thing um so I was I always wonder like you know like when we first met each other did you think we were all we would all get along the way we did yeah I liked enough all to, of you enough oh, to yeah. do a podcast yeah you know I liked all of you mm-hmm. oh good that sounds like a memorized answer I uh, like I all like of all, you all of you <laughs> <laughs> Sarah you are a happy person yeah and I'm trying to remember I don't remember what my initial thought of Dan was when I first met him. I'm I thought, very memorable I thought <laughs> Dan was like oh he's not gonna last a week oh wow. <laughs> Oh, no, wow. because there, oh. <laughs> no, because like I felt like you could do other stuff than what you were doing. It, uh, you know, <laughs> good, good no. save, good save. But it, it, I, I'm always kind of curious, like you know, when people initially meet, like, is it usually a good thing? Is it a indifference? I have a few. I have I have some criteria. First, I I, I want to make sure that you're a competent person. I have yeah. zero patience for incompetence, and then I also want to make sure that um, uh, I will take you seriously. And I want to make sure that you're going to be taken serious, take me seriously as well. So that's mm-hmm. that's kind of, and then as far as um, meeting a new, so my wife, um, when she has met a friend, and now we're going to meet, go over to their house to have dinner or have that couple come over to our house, for m- me to be able to engage with the the husband, the partner, whatever it is. I need to make sure one are do you love your significant other like can I can I tell that that you care oh, for that nice. person and yeah, then if good. you're a father or you have children together um, are you a, a devoted parent and if you meet those two criteria I'll at least get along with you I'm not gonna just not care yeah. about you you know well, that's just because you have something in common that's like well those are the two most things yeah. that that i value so if you mm-hmm. can if if our values match up in that you care for your significant other and you care deeply about the children that you're raising yeah we can mm-hmm. we can go far yeah. but as far as being super good friends i don't know if that would happen but i i at least know that you're a stand-up person mm-hmm. That's good. Do you guys, other anyone else has like criteria when you meet someone for the first time? Well, we don't fit that criteria. Neither one of us are married or have but children. But you're competent and you're, and you're serious okay. and so you yeah. want to be the taken other half. seriously. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we do fit that part. Yeah. I don't know if I have like a set criteria that I think about, but I do know that if I don't think I'm going to get along with a person, they probably won't even know I exist. Okay. Like I'm not going to go up and like make small talk or, you know, I'm not going to like mm-hmm. ingratiate myself with somebody who I don't feel like a connection with i guess so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah (laughs) yeah honesty you're looking for 
Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. I mean, there's just there's plenty of people that like say I've worked with, right? Mm-hmm. Who I've I've worked there and I've done the job and I've left and they never knew I was even there mm. because it just yeah. you know I know. How so that I don't is. think that that was the case with all of us because you know we all have, we all obviously yeah. know each other. Look at us help, now, right? <laughs> so I thought we'd all at least get along. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and I feel like my personality. I guess maybe comparing myself to like as a child, teenager, even in my twenties, um, to now that in my thirties, I think I've. I can't really say my personality has changed, but maybe the way I interact with people have now, mm. you know. So I, it still takes some doing, but I am more inclined to initiate the conversation. And I definitely was not able to do that even maybe a decade ago. Mm. Um, so I've, I've had, it's a learned trait. I've had to become more, I guess, extroverted in a way. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, yeah. what, are, what are your personality traits then? Mm-hmm. I mean, personality... I used to be extremely, like the fact that I'm doing a podcast now, the fact that I'm doing a podcast now is actually a pretty big deal mm-hmm. because I was never one to talk. <laughs> I, I, I used to talk a lot with people I know, but sometimes on a microphone I start to get tensed up. But that's not the case anymore. Oh, great. <laughs> Obviously, after <laughs> three years. But I, I just thought it was kind of interesting because uh, kind of segueing to the personality traits, when I was in college, and I think in high school too, our school were required to take, I don't know if you guys were too, were required to take a series of tests to see what kind of a person you really were and how you're going to contribute to society. Yeah, that I was guess. fun. I think they're trying to weed eat, uh, or weed eat, weed out <laughs> psychos that could be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it in was. Their midst. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Once they figured out, okay, there's some, there's some glaring traits that a certain <laughs> S- section flag. yeah, red yeah. Flag. we need to find these kids quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, but i was always on the extreme introverted scale and and by definition i still am but i guess i've i've started to it's, it's more of a not quite 50 50 but i'm mm-hmm. leaning more toward the extroverted to do things but there's a mm-hmm. lot of times where i'm still really reserved with stuff but like and admittedly i'm not a I'm not a guru on learning about personality traits, but stuff like that is quite intriguing. So what did your test say? Well, you, well yeah, because it's it's kind of, uh, is it pseudoscience? I don't know. Uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy into it a whole lot. I don't buy yeah. into it a whole Some people, whole, yeah. well, I don't buy into it. Some people put way more stock into like, into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's like their identity. Or yeah. personality test. Well, and it's also an excuse like, oh, I'm not a jerk. I yeah. have such and such <laughs> personality. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. Yeah. That's you can you... be both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, for me, it, it's it regresses. So, like, when it comes to like a personality test, and we're gonna have some fun with that in a second, but it, it regresses to astrology, and I'm like, okay, I, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, the 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 very first, this is your personality, is your zoological sign, and I, and I know that it's it's progressed, and there's been countless studies and research that have been done on it, yeah. and there are some telling signs, but even then, it's not. 100 percent infallible <laughs> yeah yeah and i figure i mean i guess it's, it's not gospel yeah but they do ask you certain questions and I, what, I, what i like about we we all did one off of a website called 16 personalities.com oh um and so four more than the zodiac oh. <laughs> nice <laughs> see you, that's something i didn't know because <laughs> oh okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's two, that's two. <laughs> uh, i mean i do i have heard people act talk to me they're like oh yeah that's you're you're definitely a leo and admittedly i don't know what a leo means but apparently well yes (laughs) 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 that's true with my mane and all but apparently i fit whatever the category is but anyway within the 16 personality website that we did Uh um it's it's a free analysis so anyone can do it you're given a list of questions and you have to answer them they kind of give you a scale on what you fully agree on and what you disagree on, there's a little bit of a in between. So sometimes some of them were difficult because there weren't any that were like, there were a couple that were definite, but others were like, eh, sort of, kind of. Mm-hmm. So learning about that, and they kind of, I think they kind of based for a few things off of the Myers Briggs thing. So like a lot of people know the personality type because they have like the different letters, the I, S, N, F, J, all those. And so one does introversion, extroversion, your intuition, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we each did one. And so I yes, thought it'd be kind of interesting to give what our overall analysis is and see if see if that was pretty spot on, was it a little bit off, you know. So um, I guess you want to go ahead and start Charity. Charity's actually pretty good. She had a full on documentation all nicely. Well, I just, I just looked at the pictures that they sent on the website. So 
I am an ISTJ logistician, I think, if I said that correctly. Logist, yeah. Um, Wait, before we go on, so I I is introversion, right? Yeah, I stands for introvert, and then the N stands for intuition, so they're kind of using it off of that. And then what was the other letters for you? Um, ISTJ. Okay, and so then I have the A at the end. And the of mine. S stands for sensing, so like focusing on the reality of how things are. Intuition is an imagining possibilities on how things are. T is dealing with how how you think, making decisions. And you said F. So that's oh I S T J, and then I had a hyphen A after mine. Oh yeah, and so with sixteen personalities, they kind of have a an a, a, a slight other section. So there's a, a hyphen A. Uh, it deals with uh, self-assurance. So are you highly a self-assured individual mm. and do you have a good temper? And I guess and I guess you don't worry too much about certain things. So that was what the hyphen A would stand for. So does that kind of, based on like those percentages, was that pretty good? Yeah, so um, most of my test uh, I felt was pretty accurate. Um, near the end of the test, they gave you percentages of like, the uh, thinking, introverted, assertive, observant, judging. Um, the one I agree with the most was 66% introverted. So I always said that I was like maybe 50-50 or a little over mm -hmm. half introverted. So I thought that was pretty um, pretty accurate. Now, this other one said 51% assertive. Now, I was surprised because I thought that number should be a lot higher because mm. I feel like I'm very assertive. And so I was surprised. I was expecting more of like the 70, like 80 number. range. Mm -hmm. um, the one that made me laugh was that I was 88% judging. <laughs> so I don't know if that I means mean, you're judgmental or if that means you're just judging like situations <laughs> and you're thinking, <laughs> but it's probably accurate on both accounts. So okay. that's just me being honest. The, the end of the test was very interesting because it took your personality type and then it compared it to like celebrities and also fictional characters which I found interesting so oh, um, mm -hmm. Denzel Washington was on my list um, I had yeah, on mine too. Uh, George Washington so I got a founding father in there got a founding father and a black father <laughs> 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 um, but for like fictional characters which was fun I had Hermione from Harry Potter and then I had Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice oh hmm. nice. yeah so that was kind of fun to do Okay. What, what about you, Alan? What kind of conclusion did you get? I got, as stated, I go into these things biased, but I took it as honest as I could mm -hmm. in thinking about it, and I came out as an ENTJ-A, my personality is a commander. I guess so it kind of goes like commanders a Commanders are say a father bold, figure. Yeah. imaginative and strong-willed, always finding a way or making one. And so as far as your breakdown, as far underneath mind, I'm 57% extroverted as opposed to 43% introverted. Hmm. As far as energy goes, I'm 73% intuitive and 27% observant. As far as my nature... I'm 59% thinking while 41% feeling. And as far as tactics, I am 58% judging while 42% prospecting. Hmm. And identity, I am 86% assertive while 14% turbulent. Oh, what is... And so as far as... Turbulent, this, yeah. I didn't see that one. Yeah. As far as my personality type on the scale goes as an ENTJ. I'm actually like at the corner. I'm like the bingo that you never get. <laughs> <laughs> See, mine yeah. was first, top left corner. Yeah, I'm strategical, logical, efficient, outgoing, ambitious, independent, effective organizers of people, and long-range planners. Now, mm. did you take note of what your weaknesses were? Because that's what I found interesting. It, it gave, oh, you all the, yeah. gave you all the good things about yourself, and oh. you're like, yeah, I'm fantastic. Well, and then what it's would like, be the weaknesses? here's your faults. Would you know what they would be if I'm an ENTJ? I don't, because they only showed up the ones that you like got I'm, on the page. I'm curious at the fact that you, you seem to be more, like, I guess if you're labeled as a commander, so you're good at taking charge and, and, and maybe managing, and maybe the downside would be maybe, kind of like we were talking about when we were getting to know each other, you know, you, you, you like people that don't. You, you, you want to you be taken seriously. Yeah, if you're incompetent, I have zero time for you, so, so, and I do not want to spend time with you. So maybe mm -hmm. the weakness is the fact of 
the tolerance level for that, the yeah. incompetence of people, is way down. So I'm, I don't know if that's true, but that seems like that will go under weakness, possibly. Yeah, See, I feel like with you, you might um, maybe not too much, but you might err on the side of maybe sometimes being too nice and letting things slide. Oh, of course, that's instead that of being is like, my, "Hey, it's my greatest do that. strength yeah. and my greatest weakness." Yeah. I am a nice person, mm-hmm. which means that I. I value honesty, and so I'm going to be as honest with you as possible. Mm-hmm. But it's also my default because, as uh, I think another thing, uh, one of the questions that came up, I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty telling question that I had to either agree or disagree mm-hmm. or some sort of yeah. um, valuation in between." Which was, "Will you make sure a task gets done, or will you, in order to get a task done?" that you don't receive credit for? Would you bring somebody along for the ride or something? I said, yeah, that's, that's me. And mainly because Mm -hmm. in, in my field, you know, we have to reach a goal, you know, in a production Mm -hmm. you have, it has to end. And if somebody's not pulling their weight, you got to pull it for them. It sucks, but it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it. And if you don't, um, then it all fails, and then then it, you end up getting punished for well, something. Not only that, but it, it it makes it demonstrably worse because somebody wants to explain, or somebody has to explain how did how did this deadline get missed, or how did this project uh-huh. fail, and then you have to point out mm-hmm. this oh, guy's gosh, an idiot, yeah. or <laughs> this gal's a moron, or something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. and and. I don't I don't have time for that. It's time wasted because now we need to think about how can we either improve this person or how do we, and it's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. So might as well just get it done, move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. That's me. You're very passionate about that last one. <laughs> it happens. It happens all the time. Yeah. You guys I, know it. I think yeah. a lot of that has just come from the job because I kind of because I always wonder. I feel like that's changed now that I'm in the workforce. If I wasn't working in this field, would I still be that way? I, you know, m- m- maybe partially. I-, I feel like the the workplace has changed how we react to things too, because like maybe we weren't like that before, or before we were given this. No, it bit comes. Of yeah, it, it, it comes with maturity. Skin. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just comes with maturity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's how I notice some of my questions are different. Because now that I'm working in a different way, I'm like, okay, this is a different. I I react differently than what I did. 10 years ago of course sure. yeah most of mine were the same yeah said i didn't have patience and i was stubborn <laughs> yeah. that's that's pretty much charity since birth yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you dan so mine was infp so it was introversion intuition feeling and perceiving oh we're the same yeah oh Twinsies. wait did you did you have Twinsies. a dash after yours I, it was a dash a yeah, dash we're, dash we're, we're, thing, so. we're identical. Okay. Uh, well, at least in that one. Might have okay, so we so mediator we're is mediators. what it was like named as. Yeah. Uh, Which one are you identical? Medi- <laughs> <laughs> mediators are poetic, kind, altruistic people, always eager to help a good cause. Oh, yeah. And then for mine, cute. so this is where we'll, you know, this is, well, we can go over kind of the same, but this is where yeah. we'll differ anyway, probably. Uh, mine was 93% introverted. Oh, wow. Oh, that's wow. a big really? number. That's a yeah. big one. Oh, yeah. Was, <laughs> I didn't uh, realize it was that much. I don't need nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and my wife and my cats. <laughs> Which has been, uh, this is the interesting thing about the personality thing, because that has been sort of a roller coaster. Sure. Because mm-hmm. when I was younger and I was uh, new to like my town, and you know I hadn't grown up there, and it was a very small town, so I was very introverted. Mm-hmm. And then when I got into high school, I became very extroverted. And I had mm-hmm. a big group of mm-hmm. friends, and I kind of yeah. like moved around in clicks and stuff like that. Now I know I am much more introverted now. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with anybody no. <laughs> outside of like my close group of friends and like mm-hmm. people that I know or whatever. I don't want to make new friends or anything like that. Yeah. So, 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 so the fact the fact that you met us, it was you had to because that's because here. It, yeah, it worked. So, so it's it like us I was still rising up on the introverted skills. You guys slipped oh. in. Just- <laughs> Right before the door closed, right we, right made it. we made it. We made it. What a relief. Dan, do you want to come along? Mm, no. No. <laughs> so that was 93%, 74% intuitive, um, the, which is like very imaginative, open minded, curious. Uh, this one actually was the one that threw me off the most. It was 67% feeling compared to 33% thinking. Mm. That might have changed more recently. I always, I've always thought of myself more as thinking, mm-hmm. like, a, you know thinking about the like logical yeah as opposed to like feeling that's but. interesting because oh keep going no, sorry no, i'm no, totally that, what's interesting well the interesting part is where my thinking is has eclipsed my feeling but i've been working really really hard mm-hmm. over the past few years to shift that oh, okay yeah. and i'm trying very hard to to stop thinking you mean no to to exert <laughs> sympathy 
Right. Oh, okay. okay. Well, know. I thought I thought you were referencing like overthinking. No, like you go way too far. Kind of like what I'm end. talking about with uh, uh, I don't have time, or I do. I struggle with making time for for people that are inept mm-hmm. to be able to turn around. But mm-hmm. I, as part as as part of trying to, you know, ha- have more feeling and sympathize. Hey, instead of I don't have time for you. Maybe let me show you a couple of tricks that could help mm-hmm. out your workflow, which in help will yeah. help my workflow and everything Teamwork. else. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I think I'm kind of in the same boat. Like I think I used to be a lot more sort of like on the thinking side, or yeah. whatever. And I've mm-hmm. been working to sort of like be more open sure. uh, to that aspect. So maybe that's why it's reflected like this. <laughs> Big old swing. Big old you know, swing. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The other one was a 72 percent prospecting. Okay. Which uh, good at improvising and adapting to opportunities mm-hmm. tend to be flexible, nonconformist. There you go, mm-hmm. man. Uh, and then that assertive part, the A at the end, I was sort of in turbulent mm-hmm. as to the things as well. Um, even tempered, resistant, and distressed, and refused to worry too much. So I know with the this is kind of for both of us then because I think they're they're similar. So I, yeah, the INFP was the sensitive, creative, idealistic, uh, perceptive, caring, loyal. Value internal harmony and personal growth. Focus on dreams and possibilities. It's got to have harmony in it. Is my G- last name. Got to have it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you have the weaknesses like pulled up? Because I had pulled all those up while we were talking. Um, oh, you know what? I thought I had the weaknesses, but no. Because all the weaknesses when it yeah, came to ahead. like the INFP were unrealistic, self I- self isolating, mm. unfocused. That's probably true. Yeah, right. I've, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> Emotionally vulnerable. Uh, and desperate to please and self-critical. Oh wow! So that uh, de- definitely the self-critical. I think anyone in the arts has yeah. this. Uh, they're their toughest critic. I had a similar mm-hmm. one because one of mine said that um, a logistician is easy will easily blame themselves for something, mm-hmm. um, even if it's like a group project. So like um, I have seen that if I've directed a show or something and like it completely crashed and burned or even had a few mistakes, like that will stay with me the whole week and I'll be upset and I'll mm-hmm. replay it. I'm like, oh, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. That's funny. Yeah. That was one of the questions like, do the smallest mistakes stay with you for a certain amount of time? For and me, I, yeah, they that's evaporate those. so fast. <laughs> so thankful. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's also another, I don't know, we didn't really go through through this, but I don't know if that's a difference also between men and women too, like the way they react to certain situations. You know, maybe it's more that you're able to be like, eh, it's in the past, it's done, let's go on. Maybe to the it's because women in production, I feel like there's more eyes on us, like because production is still a male dominated field, and so when a woman messes up, it's it's more noticeable, I think. Or either that, in or, your or, eyes, maybe or we're more vocal about it. I, like, I, I, oh, I can't believe. I, I think it depends that, on who you you're know. working with. Because yeah. I've yeah. I've worked in productions where like it was me and one other woman, or maybe just me, and so like. And this is also me being younger, too. So here yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm fresh out of college. I'm young. I'm female. And so obviously I stand out mm-hmm. versus the grizzled old veterans who have been there for 20 years. Yeah. So when I mess up, it's like, oh, the newbie chick just completely ruined the production, you know. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. at least that's how I felt. But yeah. 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 So I guess in that yeah, because I was curious about some of the questions. because Some of them were like. It could be a yes or no, depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with those quizzes, though. Yeah, because it's, it's all in context. Yeah. Is there a problem with these quizzes? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think it's not even just the context too. It's. I think that we unconsciously or, or subconsciously uh, want to answer the way we want to be, as opposed to like, yeah. like you know. I think like even if we're trying to be like, okay, I'm being 100 percent honest. I think sometimes it's like, of course. Well, I, you know, yeah. I want to be this way, so maybe this is yeah. like why I'm thinking that. So I think it's part of the reason why it, it it can be a gamble because what you think you might be honestly saying now, give it 24 hours or a week, and you might say something different, and mm-hmm. then be like, oh, well, you're 99 percent <laughs> extroverted. Well, I will say <laughs> to know? kind of go with what Alan was saying, if you know what someone else's personality traits are ahead of time, or at least what their tendencies are, it could give you the potential to be more compassionate to someone mm-hmm. who might be slower at understanding something or has a different personality. And so you can think ahead of time, okay, this person is not going to respond to this type of speech or mm-hmm. whatever. So yeah, that might helps you deal with it. people, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, but before we come to an end, fun. like I said, me, me and Dan were pretty similar. But um, for me, I was also a mediator. But actually, 
it's almost become 50-50. I'm 52% introverted and 48% extroverted. So a few years ago, it would have been definitely a higher scale of introversion. So I've had to learn to be That's what I was more expecting people. more for mine. Yeah, yeah, like with me doing screenings and being a media, I've had to be in front of the camera more. So it's got me more confident. Um, for intuit or the intuitive part, um, 63% intuitive and 37% observant. So very imaginative, open-minded, curious. That kind of makes sense. Kind of do that in this field anyway to kind of produce certain things um 64 percent feeling 36 percent thinking so I, I i guess i'm like that maybe i do tend to go more for the the feeling aspect than the thinking but who, who knows what that one is all the way <laughs> for sure um in terms of the tactics 49 percent judging and 51 percent prospecting so i'm i guess i've gotten more critical and more judgy of people as things have gone on <laughs> i feel like my tolerance level i feel like i'm slowly turning into charity and i don't know how it I usually feel happens that. my roommate turned into me by the time we graduated <laughs> <laughs> i had a friend to turn into me and i don't know if that was a good or bad thing i enjoyed it um in terms of identity 56 percent assertiveness on 44 percent on the turbulent side so it, it's weird they've they've they're getting they're almost half and half with some of these now, and it definitely wasn't like that before. It so means you're well balanced. At, at least according to this, I'm well balanced. I don't know how I'll be once. According I get home to me, today. I give you a different percentage <laughs> <laughs> within within the family. So, um, so yeah, this was an interesting look into our psyche or something. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it sounded intelligent. So if you're if you guys are curious to find out what your personality is, if you don't know already, check out the 16 personalities. It's completely free. They ask you a series of questions. Get to find out what you are, what you would like to be. Check out all of our different episodes. We're on DoubleStuffPod.com. You can also check us out on all the different podcasts platforms and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Double Stuff Podcast, and of course on Twitter at Double Stuff P and that's the letter P.